Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and this is the second time that I'm filming this video. <laughs> instead of a TBR, I am doing a books that are on my priority list. Basically books that I want to get to in March and April. You know, it's not a guarantee because I am a mood reader, but they I'm trying to keep them in the forefront of my mind, trying to get through them for various reasons. Some are arcs, um, some are continuations and series, but I'll explain that as we go along. I also want to say it's been really nice taking a break from filming and editing, but it's time to get back in the saddle and get to work. Up first, I have Alessia in Atlantis, The Forbidden Vial by Natalie Lane. So the author reached out to me and asked if I wanted to read and review this book. It is a middle grade and I've been enjoying middle grade a lot lately and I read the brief synopsis and it really sounded interesting. On the back, it says it's not unusual for 12 year old Alessia to lose control of her emotions and create a scene at school. It is unusual when one day she's attacked there by a giant frog monster and plunged into the underwater realm of Atlantis in an overturned boat. So it keeps going, but you know, I don't read the full synopsis. So that was enough to intrigue me. This is out March 1st. So that's this coming t Tuesday, March 1st. You know, look at the calendar. This is out March 1st. I have a link to it in my description, but I'm really excited to read and review this. I have been in kind of a slump. So I think this is coming at the perfect time because I need something fun. And this definitely sounds like it's gonna be right up my alley. So thank you again to the author for sending this to me. I'm really excited to read it. The next three are NetGalley arcs. So I hadn't been on NetGalley for a few years, recently got back on after the whole breach thing. And I requested four, I read one. So I want to get to these in the next couple of months to get my score back up. The first one is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. I think I talked about this in my anticipated books for this year. This is an adult fantasy. So it's set in Northern Africa. And this is written by a black author. And all I knew about it was that we have a soldier and we have someone who needs a turncoat. I think it's going to be a sapphic romance. It says through assassinations and massacres and bedrooms and war rooms, terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation, but some things aren't for sale. I feel like a blurb on Twitter also said something about like bodyguard and a princess or something. Anyway, I'm interested in it. It comes out March 23rd, so I definitely need to get to that in the first, the beginning of March because I do want to read it before it comes out. So I need to make that one a definite priority. The next one I had only heard about recently and I, I saw it on Twitter. I think someone from Tor was tweeting about it. It's called Star Eater by Kirsten Hall. And this is an adult like science fiction horror novel what got me on Twitter was I saw something about like um, cannibalistic nuns or something. So apparently Star Eater takes readers deep into a perilous and uncanny world where even the most powerful women are forced to choose what sacrifices they will make so that they might have any choice at all. And someone who read it said, if a story about an order of bureaucratic priestesses who practice cannibalistic magic and service of sisterhood featuring zombies with a delightfully hideous twist, sounds like your cup of tea, you should pounce on this book. And I was like, that sounds interesting, unique, weird. I'm here for it. And so that one comes out June 22nd. So I have a bit of time, but I would like to get to it at least by the end of April. Also can't believe it's also, it's almost March. What the fuck? Ooh, okay. So my last NetGalley arc is Island Queen by Vanessa Riley. This is an adult historical fiction. And I heard about this from Ashley at Bookish Realm. So the quote for this or the blurb is a remarkable sweeping historical novel based on the incredible true life story of Dorothy Kerwin Thomas, a free woman of color who rose from slavery to become one of the wealthiest and most powerful landowners in the colonial West Indies. I had never heard of Dorothy Thomas or I don't think I have. So I was just really intrigued by that and really interested to read this story. And so that one doesn't come out until July 6th, but I want to read it sooner than later. Um, it just sounds incredible. Also, this cover is beautiful, but yeah, I did not know about her. So I'm very interested to see how her story plays out. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> I need to read Oathbringer by Brandon Sanders. <laughs> God. I don't even want to hold this up. All right, Oathbringer. This is the third in the Stormlight Archive. I'm sure most of you are familiar. I read The Way of Kings in August, uh, Words of Radiance in like September, October. 
And then I was like, I need a break because these are some long ass books. Um, this one is even longer than those. This is about 1200 pages, 1200 pages. There's a novella that comes before this one called Edge Dancer. And I'm on the fence whether I'm gonna read it or not. Some people say you need to read it. Some people say you don't. So if you have read all of the books in Stormlight so far, if you have an opinion, let me know. But Stormlight is an adult fantasy series by Brandon Sanderson in his Cosmere, which is his like overarching universe. And it's, oh my God, they're good books. You're not gonna be wrong. They're just so fucking long. I don't even know how to explain it to you. Most of you have heard of it by now, but anyway, I need to read this one because if I wait any longer, I'm going to forget what happened in the first two books and I'm not rereading these right now. Now the fourth one, Rhythm of War, did come out in November. So the fifth one probably won't come out for three or four years with Brandon's pacing. So before the fifth one, I'll probably go back through all of these and reread them, but I do not want to reread them right now. So while I still remember for the most part what happened in Words of Radiance, I need to read Oathbringer so then I can read Rhythm of War and I won't, won't have to avoid spoilers and things anymore and I can, you know, watch Cosmere videos and, and read all the things that I want to read without worrying about being spoiled for this in Rhythm of War. But as you can see, she's a thick bitch. Someone also recommended to do a hybrid read. So to read the physical along with the audio. So I also borrowed the audiobook from the library and it has come in, but I may have delayed it a few times. So please send me good vibes and energy that I can get to this. Like I would like to read it by the end of, end of oh God. I was gonna say I would like to end it, read it by the end of March, but that doesn't seem like enough time. Anyway, I need to read this one. Okay, in that same vein of chunky adult fantasy, even though this is literally half the size of Oathbringer, I have Royal Assassin by Robin Hopp. So I read Assassin's Apprentice last summer. Oh my God, it was in July. And I've been meaning to read this ever since then and I keep putting it off. And it, again, it's the same thing where I, I keep waiting, I'm going to have to reread Assassin's Apprentice. However, my friend did tell me that the beginning of this book kind of does give you a summary or recap or it refreshes your memory enough that you don't need to go back to Assassin's Apprentice. So I'm hoping that's true and I can just go into this one and be fine. I thought Assassin's Apprentice was good. I didn't love it, but I heard they get better. So Assassin's Apprentice was relatively short. <laughs> it was relatively short and then this one almost like doubled in size but granted compared to Oathbringer this is a freaking baby book but this is about six oh someone left a bookmark in here that's cute 600 something pages and I just want to experience this amazing character work that I hear from Robin Hobb it was already good in the first one so I'm expecting it to be better in this one but just <laughs> all these pages girl why so again March, April is my goal for all of these, but Jesus take the wheel because I don't know if I can do it. Then I have Home Going by Yajasi. So this is a historical fiction novel. And on the back it says this is set in Ghana in the 18th century. So there's two half sisters. They're born into different villages and they're unaware of each other. One will marry an Englishman and lead a life of comfort in the palatial rooms of the Cape Coast castle. The other will be captured in a raid on her village, imprisoned in the very same castle and sold into slavery. So, oh my goodness. I'm doing a buddy read of this book soon with my friend Danny. I knew that this was gonna be a hard hitting book, but I hadn't read the back. Hmm. I'm glad I'm gonna read that uh, middle grade because I, I need something light and happy because I've been reading a lot of hard hitting books and it's really put me, I'm just like emotionally drained. And this sounds very emotional. It is relatively short. Oh my God, it's like right at 300 pages, amen. But it sounds like it's gonna pack a lot in here. I've heard nothing but rave reviews about the story, about her writing, so I, I am excited to read it, but I'm nervous with um, the feels that may come from reading this. I haven't efficiently hauled some of these books yet, but the following two are gifts from my amazing friend Steph, who also has a channel, which I'll link down below. And the first one is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, which everyone is screaming about on YouTube. This was some people's best of 2020. I think this came out in no, October. 
-hmm. It came out the latter part of 2020 and it is, let's see, so book one of the Between Earth and Sky trilogy inspired by the civilizations of the pre-Columbian Americas and woven into a tale of celestial prophecies, political intrigue, and forbidden magic. That's not even like the blur, but I'm not even gonna read anymore. Ooh, I love me a map. Yes, Lord. So everyone has been loving this book. I know that we have multiple POVs. There's like a journey, I think maybe on a ship. So maybe pirates are involved. I started this book on audio from the library, but it was something I felt like I wanted to read either the ebook or the physical copy. So I was waiting for the ebook and then this showed up because Steph is amazing. So I definitely wanna to get to this soon, mainly because I wanna know what the hype is about. I know I try not to give into the hype a lot, but I've just heard, I mean, glowing reviews about this. And this isn't like a typical European inspired fantasy. So I just really wanna to get to this soon so I can be in the Rebecca Roan Horse fan club, hopefully. Okay, this other gift from Steph is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is another very popular book. This is the first in the Wayfarers series, I believe. I don't know if the books you need to read in order or if they're more companion novels, but this is definitely the first one. I have read Becky Chambers' novella To Be Taught at Fortune, which I really enjoyed. She really gave me like cozy science fiction vibes. And I've heard that that's really her writing style. I've also heard these books are very character focused and I'm totally okay with that when I know that going in. So I'm really excited to read this because again, if To Be Taught a Fortunate was just so like, I don't know, it was, yeah, character focused, cozy, soft, I don't know. <laughs> It's not like it wasn't this big chaos space battle kind of science fiction and so that's the vibe I'm kind of getting with this like that is going on you know there are issues they're in space but it's really focused on the characters and their connections and and stuff like that so I'm really excited to read this one. Oh, and lastly I have another gift from an awesome subscriber so thank you so much and it's Gideon the Ninth by Thames and Muir. So I did a video last year about books that I DNF'd but I was considering giving them a second try and this was one of them. I borrowed the ebook from the library and there's a lot of names a lot of people from different houses there's like the ninth house the whatever house so in the front they have a list of like these are the people who live in the ninth house these are the people who live in the whatever house and it wasn't um, very efficient to flip back and forth in the ebooks so I was like you know I'll wait for the paperback to come out and I'll read it so I got it as a gift instead which is even better and so I'm very nervous though because I know this is kind of a polarizing book. People either love it or they hate it. I hear a lot of it revolves around uh, Tamsin Muir's writing style. I hear it's very unique, if you will. But all I really know about this is the kind of tagline that everyone describes it as is lesbian necromancers in space. I really, yeah, I don't really know what that means. On the back they have the emperor needs necromancers, the ninth necromancer needs a swordswoman, Gideon has a sword, some dirty magazines, and no more time for undead nonsense. So it definitely sounds like it's going to be very, I don't wanna say kooky, but very unique, very stylized, very individual, I don't know. I'm nervous, but I'm definitely gonna give it a try. It is a little, uh, a little thicker than I thought she would be. I mean, she's a little thick, but it's okay. I know Harrow the Ninth is already out. And um, I think the third one is coming out this year, maybe. So we shall see if I'm gonna be a fan. So those are the books that I'm putting in the priority spot for March and April. I really hope I can get to them and mix in uh, holds from the library and hopefully pace myself well enough that I don't get burnt out on a, a certain genre, especially like after a big chonker like this. Maybe adding in some more middle grade or romance, shorter things because I can, I have a tendency to like read a lot of fantasy, especially like chunky fantasy and then can tend to put myself in a slump. So I just need to learn to balance that better. And I really hope that I can get to these because like this one, so I can get to this one and then read Rhythm of War and then I can read Royal Assassin and get to Assassin's Quest. Oh my God. I have a love hate relationship with series. Like I love series, but then I also hate series because it's like, can I get more standalone? But I do this to myself. I did it to myself. Anyway, do you have any books that you are focusing on getting to for March or April? And then if you've read any of the books here that I've mentioned, have any thoughts or opinions on them, I would love to hear it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe. Check out my description box. I'll have all of the books linked. 
also links to things that are going on around the world, links to my social media and ways to support my channel. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday because there is lots of tea. It has been brewing, boiling over during my week off because we know that the book community knows no peace. Mm, Lord have mercy. But I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. Is it yummy? Is it yummy? Yummy.